Thank you so much. Well, let, let's carry on with this conversation because uh, with me, joining me now, is consultant cardiologist Dr. Asim Malhotra. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Asim, are you surprised by these statistics, firstly, with regard to all this heart failure? I'm not that surprised, actually, and I think it's important to reinforce the message around uh, the symptoms that are um, you know, most common for heart failures, people can recognise them. Mm. So normally it's shortness of breath is the most common. When people are doing activities, they might find they're getting out of breath and that would be a warning sign. That's the most common symptom. Um, the other symptoms are fluid buildup in the ankles. So people may notice that as well. Um, or just feeling very fatigued. But the actual root causes behind them are also really important to highlight because uh, the same risk factors, if you like, that drive heart disease, blockages of the arteries, are the same ones that drive heart failure. So things like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, um, uh, excess alcohol, for example, can be one of them as well. And uh, what most doctors, interestingly, and most um, cardiologists probably are not aware of, that the underlying root cause is something we called insulin resistance. So the science has evolved in our understanding of what drives heart failure. Uh, and what drives insulin resistance? Well, basically, it's uh, a relation between um, the hormone insulin in the body being sort of uh, increased in excess. And what drives that? High glycemic index carbohydrates and junk food and a lot of refined carbs and sugar, that kind of thing. And interestingly, there was one very um, fascinating study done a few years ago where they found that one type of heart failure called diastolic heart failure, mm. which in the grand scheme of things is responsible for about 50% of heart failure, and heart failure affects 900,000 people in the UK. Um, it's a big problem in America, um, estimated to hit around 8 million Americans by 2030, costing the American healthcare system about $70 billion. So this is a real burden on our healthcare systems. Um, the, the, the diastolic heart failure is a, a stiffening within the heart as opposed to a weakened heart muscle. And that can also make you breathless and make people ill. Um, and one study, coming back to it, showed that when people went on a low carbohydrate diet, within four weeks, Nana, they were able to reverse wow. from the ultrasound scan of the heart the markers of diastolic heart failure. Now, it's one study in its early stages, but we know the root cause of it. And I think when we think about the prevention side, we need to focus on fixing people's food, ultimately. It's we come back food, to the same it? conversation again and again it's and again. Food. And the thing is, I think it's quite recent, really, that doctors have really looked at food and acknowledged that it has a, a real impact. I mean, this is something that I study. I study nutrition and I've been into nutrition for many years, okay. right? So to me, it's been obvious. And when I, I a little while ago, maybe 10 years ago, diagnosed with something called lupus, and I changed my food and the way I eat, although I ate really well anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But in, when I went to my rheumatologist and said, well, this, that, and that, and that's no inflammatory food, and that, he was like, oh, well, you know, it's not really, and, and it kind of dismissed it. That's and that fascinating. was almost 10 years And did it help your lupus? Oh, absolutely. Well, it's very interesting you say absolutely. that because we know a lot of autoimmune conditions are linked to diet. But just to try and give some defense or understanding to why your doctor may have been dismissive about it, we're not taught anything about nutrition no, in medical school. It. I mean, this is another topic, but mm. most doctors know very little about it. And therefore, because they know very little about how it links to disease, chronic disease that's causing a lot of um, harm to our healthcare systems at the moment, um, then they don't have confidence to talk about it. But actually, it's not rocket science. You know, we have to really think about what we're eating and the types of foods that are being marketed and being sold and people are getting really addicted to are the ones that are really ultimately toxic to the body and, and are linked to so many conditions. Yeah, well, perhaps it's time that we doctors got educated on those things. But as a cardiologist, does that mean that you actually perform surgery on people's hearts? Well, I mean, for most of my early career, yeah. that's what mm -hmm. I did as an interventional cardiologist. Wow. So it's keyhole heart surgery. So I've seen it at the, you know, the, the end result of the harms of people's lifestyles. And of course, that inspired me to go down a journey in the last few years of prevention. So right now, I'm kind of trying to do my bit to improve medical education but also to help um, introduce policy changes that really improve the environments that people live in which derive the consumption of these sorts of junk foods. Wow. So you have done open heart surgery before? Well, it's just not, in the keyhole stuff. It's more keyhole. So there's two different, so that you can crack do open you someone's chest. To, could you, do you think you could have done the open stuff? <laughs> um, if I was trained down that line, yeah. Wow. But I mean, the good, the, the good news about heart disease uh, Nana, and that's something I do now because I manage people obviously uh, in, in clinic and in clinic environment. Most of heart disease can be both prevented and even managed really? just with lifestyle changes and with the right medications with the right patients. Unfortunately, the, the, the way we have been managing heart disease for many, many years has kind of been a very sort of pharmacological, just drug approach neglecting lifestyle a lot of these drugs are unnecessary and, and what we and really need to do as well that you then side have to effects oh absolutely other so we need to shift the balance so we need less drugs 
more lifestyle. And if we implement that across the population, then we will solve our healthcare crisis very, very quickly. Wow. Well, there we go. We've solved it in a matter of minutes here on GB <laughs> News. Thank you so right. much, My Dr. Hasim Malhotra. Thank you so much for thank joining you. me. Wow. Amazing stuff. So after the break.